<laughs> Shay goes into that club. Uh -huh. A broke, a broke dude mm -hmm. will never have the time of day to shoot his shot to a dog on Shay because it's just like, uh, uh, girl, he walking in here with a, a Heineken. He ain't got no section. Uh, uh, that ain't what we doing. He would never be able to shoot his shot. Personality, personality, but does or no that make, personality. But does that make Shay wrong? No, okay. it's just the reality of. It's Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Man, listen, I am blessed by the presence of a black goddess, a person who has been so gracious in, you know, rendering her time to me. But before we get into that, I am here to drop real content for the masses and to promise to keep it funky for your asses. And on this episode of Funky Friday, we have Miss Tammy Rivera. Tammy. Ooh. Ooh. A bunch of tomatoes being thrown up. How you doing? I can't complain. Why would you? Right. I mean, like, you're fucked, really. You know what I mean? I think, you know, I want to tell her, oh, we, we, gotta, we got some things that we got to go over. First off, I wish we would have had the, the cameras rolling off. You know, yeah. because we, we said a vibe, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but how, does, how, did, how did this happen, right? So obviously I had reached out, trying to use my own platform to reach out to like-minded people, mm -hmm. male or female, and to give them an opportunity to just chat. I just want to talk. So when people, when people seen the whole evolving of what Funky Friday is, you know, I pretty much wanted to just talk right you see what i'm saying no matter if you're a popping person not popping person whatever but we all can go along to get along agree to disagree mm -hmm. whatever about many different topics yeah. so i hit tammy respectfully and you know i was just asking about her availability sent over some dates they didn't work then all of a sudden the comment came out and anybody who knows me know <laughs> what the comment is right and she hit me, was like, damn, they killing your ass like that, right? <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck you mean? Like, what, like what, what's going on? You feel me? But, you know, I didn't, I don't, I don't know her enough for her, you know what I'm saying, to have reached out, but she did. And I was like, man, shit, fuck it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want you to speak your truth, you feel me? And I just want to prove, number one, before this whole interview is over with, I want to prove to people that a man and a woman can do something and keep it strictly professional. Absolutely. Keep things strictly like what it is. Right. I'm just happy that you just graced us with your presence. And I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. let's let's get on. Let's get right. Let's I mean, let's crank this car up, push start, whatever you we want to do. Some shit. You feel me? <laughs> what uh how did you feel about the comments that I made? Uh, um so I'm it's like I feel two ways about them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I understand both sides of the spectrum. Speak your truth. I understand. What you, I don't think you said anything wrong as far as what was exactly what the comment again. So the the it, it was, and this gets to my point. It was a minute and fifteen seconds, if I can remember, mm -hmm. the comment that went viral. Right. But the whole podcast was an hour right. and twenty and minutes. They always just take a certain. They take a snippet. Yes. So I said. Uh, you want to. A bad, a bad bitch, bitch and a woman. Right. I had a perfect example of right. what a bad a, a woman was in my household. My grandmother and my mother right. was, was in my household. And I understood that. But I was saying we don't need to mo too many bad bitches or the people who are considering themselves bad bitches or bad women. And for those people, let's let's let's, let's let, let me hear this. The people who are that feel a certain type of way about the bad bitch word, I think y'all need to kind of wake up because that is a thing, correct? Right. Do you do you sense like, oh shit, Tammy girl, that's a bad bitch. Like, is well, that a derogatory no, statement? No, it's not a derogatory statement. And for me, I feel, I understood what you were saying. I don't, I've never been the, I've never been that girl that be like, oh, I'm like, 
oh, I'm a bad bitch. Like, that just, to me, just was that kind of a corny mm-hmm. saying. But I was like, oh, bitch, you, you, that's a bad bitch. Like, you, you saying, I understand, I agree with you. A bad bitch is not just a look or a body mm-hmm. or a, 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 a car or what she drives or right. materialistic things. That's not a bad bitch. For me, my mom is a bad bitch. Mm. Excuse my French. You feel right. what I'm saying? Because I don't watch my mom go through some real life shit and prevail right so i get exactly what you're saying like a bad bitch is a woman who's on her shit who knows how to do this not just limited to cooking and cleaning and shit right. like that so that but was the thing how that went to take viral. care of household right. in general so the mistake saying? that i made what was that was not <laughs> no it wasn't what i said it was not going into detail oh, what you with meant. what i meant mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if if a person were to say, Cam, did you make a public apology? I said, no, I didn't. If, if if I would have to go back and change anything, I will go into detail to also say, you call yourself a bad bitch, but you don't know how to clip. You call yourself a bad bitch, but you don't know how to know when to be quiet. Right. But I also should say, as a man, mm-hmm. if you're part, I think I want to promote more of the understanding that you have to be whatever you have to be for your partner. Mm -hmm. And that's with a male being with a male, a male being with a female, a female being with a female, or vice versa. Or for yourself. Like real talk. Yeah, or for yourself. whether Whether you know how to cook or not, that may not be your demographic to your to your relationship, and that makes it fine. So mm-hmm. I didn't get an opportunity to go back because even I will also say it's no it's no disrespect to Wallow and Gilly. They they did what they had to do. I just hated that it wasn't on Funky Friday because right. they got the views, they got paid for right, it, they right. got the viral moment. But yet at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I got to do a better job with understanding what I meant in that situation because a lot of men real talk like. They feel the same way. They will never say it. A lot of women feel the same way. Right, real it's talk. Not, it's not, nothing you said was wrong. Like I said, I think a lot of times men, and I used to always say this to Walker back in the day, it's not what you say sometimes, it's how you say yes. things. So a lot of times when he, back in the day, when he used to do interviews, I used to have to come and say, well, what he really meant was, mm-hmm. because it wasn't like, like, oh, you always defend. It's not that I'm defending, but I know the intent yeah. of the comment. I know what right. you really meant. And sometimes you guys... Because you're men, mm-hmm. you say things and you don't, you know, and some things can be, you know, insensitive, you know, to yes. women. You, know. You, can, you, can have a, you can have a mute ear to the realization of understanding what's really going on. Right. But I understood exactly what you were saying because, you know, that is true. But right? let's keep it a book, right? And I'm in a position in my life where I'm, man, I'm free. Mm-hmm. I don't need nobody for nothing. I don't want nobody right. for nothing. The people who felt offended, it was either one or two things. Either they were that person who I was talking about, mm-hmm. or number two, they wasn't fucking with me from the jump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's more so too, as, as I think, like I said, it's, un, it's the understanding of, it's, the, it's I think it's a lot to do with the new generation as well. A lot of people, this new generation, and I, I might get in trouble for saying it, but they are very sensitive. Mm-hmm. People are extremely sensitive nowadays. I don't know, back in the day it wasn't like that, but like my mom, my grandmother, they right. taught you in order for you to make, you know, you have to cook for your man. You have to yeah. know how to cook, make a man happy, to stand him third. But they also taught you how to go to a job interview. They told you how mm-hmm. to be a woman, how to hold down your household, how to do this. Right. They told you, okay, my mom used to say, you know, um, first appearance is lasting appearance. Like, so that, that taught you how to make sure you always stay good. So all those things make up of a, right. what you what they would call a bad bitch nowadays. Correct. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> But, but you said you cooking and cleaning, and that's all everybody heard. <laughs> right, that's all they heard. But I, really if I had to, it's if okay. I had to, if I had to correct myself, I would go into details mm-hmm. and knowing too. Like yeah. a lot of men, like they they are lacking in a lot of areas too. So before I just sit up here and throw on my queens, sure. I knew my heart, right, and I say this publicly. I know my intentions, and it hurt me the fact that I'm being presented as a menace to the overall growth to women, black women, women of minority, or women as a whole, that that was never my intentions. I have daughters. I have strong women in my life that teach me from biracial, uh, Caucasian, African-American that I love, respect dearly and wholeheartedly. So how could I be presented off something? The thing that really ticked me off about the situation was that the people who were make, making the same kind of justifiable facts that they thought was, you know, well, you can't say that. Who are you to say a woman can't clean or a woman can't cook or she doesn't know how, when to be quiet? But they're not making no points about it. They're just saying, oh, isn't this the same man who has multiple kids by multiple baby mom? That what they got to do with anything. You know what I'm saying? Isn't this the same dude that made this sexist comment about... 
I was like, listen, I apologize for that. And it that also was taken out of context. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but everything you gonna everything you say or don't say is gonna be taken out of context. Yeah. Especially nowadays. Like so that's why when I talk now I can't like I am who I am. You are who right. you are. Everybody like you said, you have to agree sometimes to disagree. It doesn't right. define a person. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't help that. You can't. It's nothing you can so do going to that. the point <laughs> going back to the point, like after the second thing is like these people who feel a certain type of way about who Cam Newton is, they never was fucking with me from the jump. Like, let's just keep it a buck. Oh, they, they, didn't, oh, they didn't know who Cam Newton really that, is. That, that part. <laughs> yeah. So even then, like, when this interview comes out, people may think, like, damn, Tammy, like, why the fuck is she talking about this situation like right. that? Like, that? I don't fuck. That's, why, that's exactly why I don't fuck. But, you mean like me anyway, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on with it. Come on with it. So, I mean, I'm at, I'm at a point in my life where it's like, man, bro, I got too many kids for me to care how you feel as a grown mm -hmm. person. Like, that's a, you're not my responsibility. Yeah. And it's sad that we live in, in a society where a lot of people, and they're like, well, Cam, when you say that, did I lose money in endorsements? Yes. I had you deals. Did? I did. Oh, wow. I did. Over that? I did. I that did. is crazy. I did. I, and, and I don't know if anybody knows them. But it, I had a I had an awakening moment. I said Damn. to myself, first off, I'm not rich enough. I didn't even think it was that deep, though. It was deep. So my thing, my first thing that I thought about, I said, I'm not rich enough. Because there's other people that said worse, mm. that has a lot of money yeah. to be able to be financially stable. And say, man, I don't give a fuck about what I said. But right. I said what I said, and I ain't apologizing. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. And we know who those people are. Yeah. They don't look like me. But we know who exactly. those people are. Correct. So at the end of the day, it's like I, I after this whole situation, I was like, I don't got enough money. I need I need to to be financially stable to be able to say anything I want because I'm not saying it out of hatred. I'm not saying it out of out of any rage. I'm saying it to empower people what? because people who look like me, people who have my type of platform, they will never say it. Right. And they got the biggest platform: ESPN, CNN, right. CNBC. Fox, Netflix, Hulu, whatever. They'll never you say know, it those because... those are the politically correct people. But like, even me watching... I don't even watch sports. I don't. I, I promise you, I don't, when it comes to sports, I can't tell you a damn thing. But when, like, you know, you have the sports channel turn the ESPN, you hear the commentary, mm -hmm. and you hear black men up there talking about, like, other black men yeah. in, like, horrible ways. Like, damn, yeah. are you just doing this to be politically yeah. correct? Like, I feel a way about yeah. that sometimes, too. And I'm a woman, you know what I'm saying? Listen. Like or even watching interviews, it's like you're you really probably feel the same way, but you just you won't just can't say, say it, it. You know. So who's the dummy? Who's the fool? Yeah. Just because you're getting paid three hundred thousand, one point two million dollars, mm -hmm. ten million dollars, twenty million dollars to be able to say to be a puppet? Right. You see what I'm saying? No, granted, I'll be the first person to tell you I'll take that check, right. but at the same time, it comes with a price. Right. And that price is you are a puppet because you say one thing wrong, you're gonna be reminded that you're still a nigga. That You're still a person that is just a pawn. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep it a book. And you know, it's crazy. You funny say I always, I always say to people like I know that there's going to be a cap on my success mm -hmm. because at a certain point there's certain things you have to sacrifice that you're not willing that I wouldn't be willing to. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes it's not also always about what money because like you say I need to be rich enough. I know I, you feel like I, I'm not rich enough, mm -hmm. right? But you never may not never be rich enough because it's certain people, it's certain things that you probably wouldn't even go there with because, I mean, if you have an integrity as a man and, and your morals of, of who you are, then there's certain things that you probably would never be able to touch that status quo because of the things that you are not willing to give up. You get what I'm saying? But I say it right now. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about a lot of shit. Like, let's just keep it 100 with you, you feel me? But shit, I'm doing what I'm doing and personally, <laughs> Personally, and I'm not, I say this humbly, I, I, I'm doing what I do now just for my lineage. Mm. Like real shit. Like if I want to do certain things that people see a lot of different other people finessing and flexing with, I could do that. Do I do it? No, that's mm. just not me. You would think it is. Like I'm pretty sure you, you walked into this interview like, man, I don't know how Cam is and da da da. And I hope you leave like, oh, okay, cool, Cam, cool people. I kind of right? can get a reading of people that like energy. Like you get kind of yeah, energy. like Auras. I kind of get yeah, or you kind of can, you kind of know like there's people that walk up to me all the time. They just give me a hug. They're like, girl, I know you. And I'm like, girl, you do know me because mm -hmm. they do from what they see on TV or interviews and people. You know what I'm saying? They right. You, I mean. Fake is always gonna show. Of course, no. It's transcend even through cam, cam even through cameras. Only the fake though. Only the fake. I tell people all the time. Only the fake 
don't understand the real. Well, I, 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 I say, ooh, that came out real fast. Right? <laughs> I would say eventually it would show. Authenticity yeah. will show too. Authentic, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the point. Classic shit gonna always last. Period. Pure, Even purity. through these cameras, energy transcends. Yeah. It's gonna be a situation, right? I would always say like, purity in a person will show mm -hmm. eventually. Mm -hmm. When a person talking about, man, I'll kill a motherfucker. It's gonna be an opportunity where you're gonna have you to, to show that. You're gonna have to show that. Mm -hmm. Bro, what all this shit that you were talking about? Like, yeah. what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, where, where that energy at? Yeah. Uh, Miss Tammy, I want to talk about something. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of similarities without actually being directly co connected. Um, talk to me about your situation and, and how co parenting works. Because for me, I co parent with two. Uh, unbelievable woman, mm -hmm. by the way, um, and our relationship is great. That's good. And I think we help a lot of people when we have these type of discussions and topics. Absolutely. And it ain't trying to exploit you. I ain't trying to. No, I got you. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But how how does it work for you? So I know, like I was watching a lot of the comments when I had they had caught our live interview with me, and I was talking about how we co-parent with Charlie and we co-parent with the dogs. And people are like, oh, girl, you just one of y'all just wanted y'all gonna still be together, or you just still trying to stay connected. But I'm like, no, people really don't understand that shit is real. Mm -hmm. Like, um, for I start with my daughter. Um, everybody knows that that's not bi biologically Walker's mm -hmm. daughter. Uh, Walker met Charlie when he came to my life, like when Charlie was like four or five. My baby's about to be 17. Mm. She's uh, she was four years old when he first met her. So she literally and he um, biologically he doesn't have any kids of his own, mm. and they're chemistry and relationship I would never ever ever get in between because that's her father in my eyes. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And her eyes too. And in her eyes. Um, more importantly in her and eyes. His and in his too. eyes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um and even over the years when we've you know, everybody know we've been in our ups and downs, back and forth, broke up, separated back together. He's never even when we weren't talking, he was giving look, you ain't gotta answer the phone. He called I don't wanna see I don't wanna see Charlie. I don't mm -hmm. give a damn. You know what I'm saying? Like so he always been consistent in her life. Yeah. And as a woman I respect that 100%. Like right. I tell him, nigga, you ain't got to never speak to me. But I would not, I would never keep Charlie from you. That's my mm -hmm. word. Um, because that's your child and you've earned that right. So even though we're not together, that's, you know, Charlie, you ask Charlie, Charlie, like, I ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Like, that's my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he was like, that's my daughter. And as far as like the dogs, we both have two dogs and one is more close to him, one is closer to me. And we tried to separate them, but what they were getting like separation anxiety and was like, Throwing up, getting sick, mm. and I realized I'm like, yo, what's wrong with my damn dog? And when I realized, like, damn, she's missing the other dog, so we realized we couldn't separate them. Wow. So we literally have to like, yo, you come and get them in two weeks. You know, I drop them off two weeks. Like, we literally like have <laughs> to do that type of shit. Like, they get on my nerves when niggas be sitting outside his door. Like, yo, come and get these fucking dogs. They right. pissed on my house. Right. But yeah, so it's real. And I think a lot of times, especially with the younger generation, like my grandfather, my grandfather, my grandmother was never married. Um, my grandmother had a whole new man. My grandfather would come in the house, cook for uh, his grandkids, her and her man. What? Uh-huh, and leave, like, all right, old, I'm out. When my grandmother got sick, they weren't together for over 60 years. My grandmother got sick, my grandfather moved in the house and took care of her while he had stage three cancer and nobody knew. And it was more like a bond. Like, they yeah. would argue all day long, like, fuck yeah. you, you get the mm -hmm. But it was like, they had, they had kids together when they were in their early 30s and Never touched again since then, but it yeah. was that bond. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And I tell people all the time, like with Waka, the world wouldn't know Tammy if it wasn't for Waka. Mm. So let's just say that first. He's um, now. I'm not gonna say that I worked my ass off of what I got. Like I, I built As my own should. foundation. Yeah. yeah, off of off of what you know, saying what I was given. The the you know the platform that he. Gave right. me. I built my he own gave you an opportunity gave, and you maximized your opportunity. Right, just like most niggas get a homeboys right. or whatever the case may be. Um, I just came back, you know what I'm saying, and I, I flipped my shit mm. and I built my own thing. So with that, whether he's us not being together, him not being my husband no more, right. from one real nigga to the next, I always have respect for him and I right. always say that. As you should. Yeah. But I think a lot of people in co-parenting face the issue of that's not your child. You yeah. said something that was very key. You said that's our child. Mm -hmm. Those are not your children. Those are our children. Right. See what I'm saying? And once you get that misconstrued where mm -hmm. this child support ain't nothing, well, this child support is for the child. 
This yeah, ain't for your you. this ain't mm-hmm. for your Chanel purse, your Birkin bag, yeah. and your damn. See, and the thing, like, not to cut you off, like even like what black people don't know is something nobody knows. I was married prior to Waka. Mm. That was Waka's my second marriage. I married my daughter's father when we were nineteen or twenty. He was my high school sweetheart. Okay. Took my virginity, had a baby, all those things. Um, got married. Um, was with him for like ten years, whatever the case may be. Horrible relationship ever. But and I never talk about it out of respect for my daughter. Correct. But now my daughter's older now, so she yeah, understands. she gets it. Yeah. She understands. Um, but I never believed in. I think he took me. He used to take me to court back and forth for whatever reasons. Um, and I never ever believed in putting. And I'm not saying that. You know, for the people to, who but, do but, it, but, yeah, that's you, per, you only you only speaking personally. I'm only speaking personally and we because I never, that up. I never believed in going to a white man and make him tell you to pay take care of your child. That's mm-hmm. that's my thing. Right. That's personal for me. Um, but he kept taking me to court, and once he kept taking me to court, you know, my lawyer's like, listen, you're gonna have to, you know, what I'm saying. So it was like a rebuttal, and the judge was giving, well, you want, you know, well, you need to, since we're here, you need to pay her some child support. You right. feel what I'm saying? But I never. I always felt like shit, nigga. I'm not gonna make you. I'm not gonna beg a nigga to do nothing for mine. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got mine, and whoever I'm with gonna make sure that he got mine too. Let me ask <laughs> you this question: Are you ready for Walker to move forward? Absolutely. I want Walker to be happy. Do you think he? Do you think he's ready for you to move forward? I can't speak for him. Right. You know but you saying? know, in your partner. But I know he would want me to be happy. Mm-hmm. I do know he want me to be happy, and that's another thing that I think people really don't understand. It would kill me. I could be married with five new kids. It would kill me to not see him successful. There's no way I would be okay with him not being Because y'all good. built a bond that yeah, will you know be a life, that will that will endure a lifetime. Yeah, like I could never. Like I want him to be happy. I, if it's Holly Berry or who, I don't care. Berry Holly. Holly. Yeah, Berry Holly. Whoever, Berrett Holly. <laughs> I want him to be happy. I want him to be successful. Like I, I would... I don't understand. Like I got, to, we have, we've been through some real shit together outside of cameras, outside of um, reality TV, mm-hmm. outside of like I done, he done been with me before nobody knew me, and I ain't had shit. I done been with him when he didn't have shit. We didn't right. ten toes down with each other. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's why I know even Walker when he does his interviews, he's like, that's always my nigga for life because. Y'all been through some shit. Yeah, you know, and he knows my, he knows my heart. He know, he know me. You know. This is this is the thing that 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 raises this needing to be said. I don't think a lot of people knows the importance of bond over the sexual Mm -hmm. lust that you may have with a partner. Mm -hmm. Sex doesn't have to be involved, Mm -hmm. but you can still genuinely love a person. Absolutely. I have that now. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And you're talking to a person who, at one particular point in time, I couldn't see my baby moms or... Either one of them, like, be with somebody else. I was just that immature selfish, immature, yeah, yeah, immature, extremely immature yeah. to be like, man, uh-uh, you don't, uh-uh, you don't get this or you don't get that. I went through that phase. I never, it never impacted their lifestyle, especially with the kids, because it's not their lifestyle that I care about. It's the children's lifestyle. Absolutely. If, if this comes with this house, then so be it, right, right? right? It just is what it is. But a lot of people need to hear well, that's the, to realize that now. the fact that, we don't have to have any type of sexual contact or even have any type of intimacy for me to genuinely be there for you. Absolutely. And to care about you. And but your jurisdiction is cut off by who I'm being intimate with too now. See, this is the thing though. I look at it like, okay, like your homeboys, right? You got homeboys that they, they do some shit for, for sometimes get on your nose, you don't fuck with whatever, but you mm-hmm. can never see your, your real friend fucked up. I feel like that's the same way with, with your partner. Like, uh, before I before I was I would rather let go of my husband and lose my husband than to lose my friend. Oh, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like a friendship is forever. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, just like I have my homegirl, like they tell me pull up, I'm pulling up. Now, of course, granted you've been in a relationship, but even even being in like say you've been in a relationship with somebody or you you go and you dealing with someone else, that person who knows you as well gonna know your heart like and they respect like yo. I respect the fact that you won't ever right. see your homeboy fucked up. Right. I respect the fact right. that you got that nigga back like that. Like right. that made me love you even more because mm-hmm. I know that if the table is turned, if it yeah, can, if push come to shove, you feel what I'm saying? You, you do, do the same thing. for me. But a lot of, but that takes maturity too. Right. Cause a lot of niggas is immature, mm-hmm. and I hate saying it. I keep saying niggas, but I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, just speak your truth. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of men are immature, and you know, and women. 
And it's, it's not a thing where I, I can't, my heart not built like that. I just can't, I, mm -mm, it, it wouldn't be, I don't give a damn if he was with, married and had five kids and I'm married and I have five kids. I know, I know that the person I with would know me well enough to be like, oh no, we gotta make sure we're good. Man, you know listen, what I'm the, thing, the thing about it was this, and it never hit me until I had a family member who went through a separation. And people don't know when you go through certain things, it not only impacts you, it impacts everybody else around, around you. Mm -hmm. My family's demographic or dynamic is extreme, like extremely close. <coughs> I've never had any sisters, but my cousins are so close, I looked mm -hmm. at them and viewed them as sisters. Yep. So when a family member went through her separation, her separation, it was our bond was so strong. His, her husband, you know, was always come to the house, mm -hmm. and we would build like that mm -hmm. relationship. So it would be times where the husband would come over our house without even our biological cu our right, cousin right. be there. So it's just like we build that connection. But over time, when they separated, we d we were so tight that yeah. it was like, damn, this shit kind of awkward. But it's just gonna be what it's, it's gonna, gonna be. Right. And over time, she even had to admit she was like, listen, he's not a great husband. But he's a great person. Yeah. He's a great person. He may not be the best husband for me, yes. but he's a great person. Yeah. He's a person that you can rely on and do this. And that's the only thing that I was trying to get her to understand is like, and people for, his, for that matter, it's like the nigga that you fucking with, the person that you're dealing with, it, it may he may not be that best figure for you for that particular time yeah. in your life. Mm -hmm. When y'all first met, of course, everything, he gave you protection, he gave you security, right. she gave you security, she gave you this look that you was dire in right. dire need of, she 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 made you better, he made you better, and he he complimented you, she complimented you, uh, vice versa. And then all of a sudden, as you guys evolve, then everybody says, I never changed. Yes, you have to change. That's yes. why God created different seasons. Yes, and I I'm a firm believer in that, like everything is in its timing and, and every, Every um is a you know it's different chapters. I always say like Waka ha has he's changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. Like the first the Waka I knew from when we were no I I, I don't 20s. know him personally, yeah, but, but you, I could tell yeah, when he speaks now. It's like I don't even think he condoned it. His music is different. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. When he came out here with "I Go Hard" in the mother, right? That was like, a whole was different that, person. <laughs> but he was he was the. He was one of the earlier in my time mm -hmm. that created this sound about Absolutely. angry, the, the dangerous music. Yes, yeah, that I, dangerous yeah. music. I now you it. see it in a lot of many different people who, who will still remain nameless, but it's like, bro, that that fighting music. Yeah. When you hear this shit come on in the club, it's just like, yeah. fuck that bougie shit. Motherfucker, get out my way. I don't think he enough credit about for that either. I don't think we'll get enough credit no, for he, like, no, he, he created a to. sound that, that like, you know, has it still travels, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but he has changed tremendously. And I always tell my friends, I'm like, whoever gets him now, they got a good man. Mm -hmm. I done put the goddamn label. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but even then, still to that fact, I think people yeah. will be with, each, people I mean, will be with another person man, but, because you know, it's like, you're making him better for somebody else. else. Yeah, and that's real. Indirectly, though. Indirect, yeah, you know what I'm saying? that's real shit. Because I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday and I was telling them, I was like, you never know, you never look at a situation that you're dealing with now and like, be like, oh, put this she, gonna, in. she gonna she gonna be a perfect ex. Yeah. Because you think this is the last that you're going to ever have. Mm -hmm. But when things don't work, when things happen in life that are non-negotiable for a person, it'd be like, no, nah, I got to move on. But what you have built with that person is still going to carry over into their whole development. Yeah, because he's a too. whole different. I mean, before I met him, he wasn't a father. Mm -hmm. Before I met him, he was, he didn't, you know, he, he wasn't a husband. He didn't have examples of husbands around, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and people always like, oh, she she always defend him. Like, throughout my whole career, it was like, oh, she always defend him. She always defend him. I'm just, I'm, I'm a Leo. I'm loyal by default. I, I'm going to defend my people. And then when we get in the room, I'll be like, nigga, you got me. I'm yeah. a go, but I'm a, I'm a, a lot of people don't know, down, how to, you know? know how to differentiate. But I yeah. think, I think, I think being on the scene has taught you that. Yeah, and you know, and I just, I, like, I, I know, like, that, he has, he's grown a lot. We've learned and we've grown from each other a lot. Sometimes you outgrow each other. Sometimes you grow apart. Or, you know, sometimes I always say you've been through, sometimes you go through too much to go forward and you go through too much to go backwards. Mm. But you got to be okay with those decisions. You get what I'm saying? And at, at, at more than anything, it's more so about yourself and your peace. Right. And I'll I be 36 in July. And 
Um, I don't know. I tell people all the time it's something like when I hit 35, it was like epiphany. It was like I, I realized things about myself. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. I realized that, you know, that some things that I didn't it don't think, even matter. Yeah, you get it what I'm saying? Like, the older you get, the less you don't give matter. a damn about. I you, had that epiphany. <laughs> I had that same epiphany. Trust me. I had that epiphany when I was 29 years old. And when my son, I thought I, I thought I had it at a, a come to Jesus moment when my daughter was born, Sovereign Dior, but it, it affected me. I, 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 I looked at life in a different sense. I was more tender. I was more careful. Then I realized when I had my son Caesar, it made me, it opened up a side of me that is like, bro, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And it's it's a dangerous feeling, feeling. because mm-hmm. you're in control. Yep. So when situations like comments like that being said and everybody's defaming you and trying to say, oh, man, let's do this. Oh, he's the bad person. He's dead. I really don't. Yeah. Because yeah. at that point, I had really made a mistake with stepping outside of my relationship. Mm-hmm. And I knew I made a mistake. Mm-hmm. But I was not going to defame my my biological child. Right. You right, see what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. And I, I and anybody who speaks to me speak knows me like, bro, I have seven kids pridefully. Right. It's not like mom oh, fuck these damn kids. I look forward <laughs> to going to get my damn kids. Right. And I always say, if I can't go with my girl or if I can't go with my kids, mm-hmm. I'm not going you're not right. gonna see Cam. You're right. gonna see a fucking ghost. Right. You see what I'm saying? If they can't pull up or if they can't be in that type of setting, it's just ain't it's just not gonna give. So with that being said, I think even with this whole reality of me being carefree or living carefree, it warrants me to walk even more proudly mm-hmm. because I know the type of man that I am and the type of man that I'm inspiring to be because I want to make being a father cool again. Yeah. I want to make being a black dad cool, right. cool again yeah. because we got such a stigma where yeah. it's like, oh, shit. Pookie them don't got no daddy. Right. But I'm like, no. Nah. Cam take care of his kids. He highlight his kids. His kids know right from wrong. He's raising daughters to say, nah, baby, Kuda, Shakira, uh-uh. That ain't the mm-hmm. boy from you. Because I'm telling you, the boy that's for you is the man that was in your life who raised you. Yeah. yeah. And vice versa. So I think and for I think me that's the that situation with Charlie and, and Waka. She has that um he has that rawness, realness relationship with her. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, where's though? Like, I, you know, I'm like, yo, you holler at your daughter. Because, you know, because she, she didn't grow up like that. So, to walk up, I'd be telling him, like, I remember we had to have a raw conversation with her. He's like, you need to be green out here. I'm telling these niggas this. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, you talk to her straight up. Right. Because, you know, she's, She's seventeen. She's she's about to be seventeen in a month. She doing. She probably doing some things that you probably don't think she doing, but she doing. We we talk. I ain't gonna shit with shit past these kids. (laughs) Man, I just had my daughter. I just had my uh my oldest daughter Shakira on on the Funky Friday episode. Oh wow! And you know we talking Mm -hmm. candidly, and we talking for the world to see. So. Just imagine what I talk about in, in closed doors. Exactly. I'm like, Shakira, you smoking? Shakira, you drink? Shakira, you doing the nasty? Right. And some people may be like, man, that's 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 breaching, you know what I'm saying, that privacy no, with your not. kids. Like, no, first off, who paid for that phone? Right. So why the hell should I ask you for your code right. if I'm paying for the bill? Exactly. Said, Fuck it. I ain't yeah, paying I for shit. You, you figure it out. You pay for the bill. Who told, paid for this Chick-fil-A? I tell who? people all the time, it's more so about being... Like, you can't raise your children. Like, back in the day, our parents thought, well, go on this household, stay in the household, or don't do this, or don't do that, or da da da. I have a relationship with my daughter where I'm like, I get on her level. Yeah. What's going on? I'm straight up, I'm raw with her. Like, when she told me, and people, my, she th- when she first told me, like, she thought she liked girls, but she has a boyfriend now, but when she was, she was dating girls, and she's like, she like girls, and I said, everybody like, I said, everybody like, like girls, so it's time to eat some pussy. And my yeah. daughter, everybody like, why did you say that to her? And mm. I'm like, that's the truth, yeah. you know? And you, and my, but my daughter knows, you know, she, we have that relationship. Right. Like I'm raw, I'm candid with her because when you get out in the streets, they're going to be raw. But you and don't think, you. you don't think that you, and, and I say this because I know what you're saying. You're not trying to force your child to be a man liker or a man lover only no, or exclusively. I'm just telling her, you know, what comes with, with us, yeah, as a like parent I'm being real. Pr- perspective. Yeah. Right. And I'm also telling her like, listen, if that, you know, I think women are beautiful, yeah, of course. gorgeous, love women. You and me, but both. I, I don't, I don't think I, you know, that's not my thing. You my my favorite thing that I tell my children is this: Shakira, she's sixteen. China, Jaden, he's seventeen. And I say, listen, bro, 
I done been 17 before. Right. Shakira, I've been 16 before. You ain't never been 32. But they know they think that you don't know. My daughter think I'm her. But, she think I'm not the. I'm like yo. I'm my daughter think I'm so old. I'm like yo. I'm. I'm flat, girl. Yeah. I'm, that, I'm that bitch. Yeah. Like, and my baby's gonna be like, nah, yeah. you ain't not. I'm like, yeah. yo, you bitch tripping. But they don't they don't they don't know your social circles though either because they're protect you protect them, especially for me. Like I have cigar lounges, I have business ventures that my kids don't even know of or know about. That's not to say that they can't know anything eventually, but it's like they don't have the mental understanding of the the mental telepathy to digest. Mm -hmm. Like, what does daddy do now? It's like, right. daddy's not playing football at this moment, but what does he do? Right. And when I bring them to sets, when I bring them to, you know, on, out of town with me and I say, hey, man, I got to go do this meeting, I got to have this meeting, that I set this up, I got to do this. When you when you don't hear from daddy for about two or three days, this is what he's doing. It's right. not like I'm just over here playing Xbox and eating Doritos and shit. Yeah, but that's good. But it's, it's, it's important for them to see that and to know. Because kids don't, they when they're used to a certain lifestyle, they just think that the money just comes or they don't think like, okay, well, you get what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. even with Charlie, like like it was very important from uh, when me and Waka separated for her to not be like, oh well, when my mom and my dad separated, we had to things changed. I couldn't go to this school. We had mm -hmm. to downsize in cars. Not like, nah. I want my daughter like shit. My dad, my mom separated. Shit, yeah, ain't shit changed. Like ain't I stand the same. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause my mama got some sh her own shit Correct. going on. But I have to. I have conversations with my daughter where I sit down and I explain to her like this because my daughter always tells me she's a cancer, but she always tells me. Ma, you just so you just so strong. You just got you just. I don't know when you're going through. So I said, you think I don't cry? You think I don't be going? I said, I just I'm I'm used to getting shit done. That's that ball of mom. Yeah, you know. But she said I'm so. I had to realize that I had to deal with her a different way mm -hmm. because she'd say I'm so aggressive. Mm -hmm. But I, where I grew up, I had to be you tough. Had to. I had to be. You, had to. you know what I'm saying? And then I don't come from no no soft, soft women. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I tell her like you know it's not that I'm aggressive. I'm too aggressive. I had to kind. Of, she told me she said when I say certain things. It was a. It really was an eye opener for me because we had a conversation the other day, and she's like, "Mommy, when I talk to you, you get so defensive." She was like, "You don't listen to what I'm saying." I'm not, you know. She was like, "It's like sometimes I be trying to com communicate with you, but you, you so defensive." And my daughter was saying that to me, mm -hmm. and I had to sit back and tell her, I say, "It's not that I'm defensive." I said, "I, you know, like for instance, my baby might come. I'm like, well, my my my, my friend and her mom, they did, you know, they had a picnic, and I'm like." Nigga, I be taking you across the country with mm. me on mommy daughter trips. Like, what yeah. do you mean? Like a picnic? Like, you know, right. but for her, it's not her saying, she just saying, like, I wanna do that more often. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm offended because I'm right. like, I'm doing everything right. to give mm -hmm. you every you know what I'm saying? You talking about a picnic. A picnic. So I had we to, going to Israel. You, you we feel going what I'm saying? Miami. Like going you to... on yachts and things, yeah. but I had to sit back and I had to humble myself because I said, Your daughter is talking to mm -hmm. you. Right. And this time for you to sit back and shut the hell up and listen to how she feels. Yeah. So there is no handbook on parenting at it's all. Not. And I tell people that no. all the time. We you literally can't really Google and Wikipedia village. that shit. It's you just can't. Not, you got to go off of experiences. And how you feel. Like and it really takes a village. More children brings more personalities and differences. Yes, y'all have one, but I, yeah. I can imagine. So all my children are different. It's like one of my that. children, they 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 may flock to the other person. The other child may just feel like, man, I like playing by myself. I just yeah. may go upstairs or I may go outside by myself, and that's fine. Yeah. I, I promote whatever makes you happy makes me happy. Yeah. Under the understanding of knowing that I'm still going to do my parental due diligence by expressing to you, like, hey, you know, mm -hmm. Shug, man, go on to take uh, Pumbaa outside, man, y'all. Da, 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 go take your brother, help your brother downstairs. Da, 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 bring him here so I can change his diaper. Yeah. Like, all these things that, you and know, you go the, about. The, my daughter, it was funny. My daughter, she texted me, and she said, Mommy, she had a boyfriend. She's like, Mommy, I don't know if I'm ready yet, but, um, and I know that sex is an emotional and a spiritual connection, mm. so I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, I have not made a decision, but I want to get your opinion. And I went like crazy. I'm talking about my friend, like, oh my God, my daughter thinks about sex. Like, I yeah. was like, my friend was like, I'm like, yo, I don't even want it. And my friend, like, yo, she's like, sit back, Trish. Like, who the fuck texts their mother and tell them they yeah. want to talk about it because they feel in the way, you yeah. know? And I had to sit back, like, I wasn't thinking about it like that. All I felt was my, you know, saying mm -hmm. my emotions. I said, sometimes, it, you really, it's really no handbook. I go by this shit every day. And sometimes, you know, like, I, I sit back and I'm like, damn, did I did I do the right thing? Like, was mm -hmm. I? I have to ask my friends like, yo, was I tripping or was, was I too lenient, or should I did this? And they right. like, yo, you you doing what you feel right. is right as a parent. Uh, but <laughs> the thing too, 
You can't get fucking expertise from people who can't like understand, understand that. You, like you know what I'm like saying? Like it. I've I've warranted and separated from a lot of my friends peer groups or whatever because the person that I'm growing into, y'all can't cope with it. Mm -hmm. Like they be like, bro, where you at, bro? I'm at the crib. Man, get your lame ass out the house. I'm like, bro, I got these kids. Yeah. And you don't understand. You just don't have the luxury of just saying, hey, everybody get upstairs and go take a bath. My kids are young, so I have to bathe them. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. have to change their diaper. When they're with their when they when they're with their moms, they have to do the same thing. Right. So I can only imagine, you know, what they what they deal with and go through. But, man, come on. I'm ready for it. Well, are you ready for the question of the day? Absolutely. What is it? The question of the day is this. I'm going to give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. And I want you to your honest opinion. Give me your, give me <coughs> how you feel about it. All right? Joe Blow, give me a girl name. Tiffany. Tiffany, mm -hmm. right? So Joe Blow and Tiffany are dating, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's Tiffany is Joe Blow's partner. Okay. Right? Tiffany or Joe reaches out to Tiffany one day and say, man, you know what? I'm still working. It's my daughter's birthday. Mm -hmm. I forgot it was her birthday tomorrow. Can you pick up her a gift? Mm -hmm. Right? She gets the gift. How soon until Joe Blow has to give Tiffany back the money or reimburse her for the gift? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even ask for the money back if I was Tiffany. But why though? Because I mean, if that's if y'all dating that and and that's who you're with, and that's his and his daughter's birthday, then that's your you know that's your that's your responsibility too because you're a part of that situation. Mm -hmm. Might not be your biological daughter, but right. it's her birthday. It's it's, it's our our daughter. But birthday. you're saying this because that situation probably has happened, or and not I, the I, same I, thing, but you've been in a situation. Absolutely. I've I remember once me and Walker's mom, me and Deb didn't talk for two years. Mm. In the beginning, like before we got married, we didn't talk for two years. We could not get along. We didn't talk for two years. And Christmas would come up, and I used to go to my Christmas shopping. And I would go shopping for my mom and my family, my niece and my nephew, and I would go shopping for his family. He would give me money. I would go shopping for his family, too. Uh, even if he didn't give me the money, I'm like, well, if I buy my mom a gift, I got to buy his mom a gift. And I would write her name on it, and I would give him the gifts, and I would sit in the, in the, in the driveway, and I'm like, you can take her shit. Like, I ain't mm. getting out. That's petty, though. We weren't talking. But that's petty, though. I get how is that petty? I'm just keeping it funky. She wouldn't want me at her house. But that's petty. <laughs> that, and that's petty on her part, too. We were both being petty at the time. Exactly. <laughs> but we wasn't talking, but I'm saying I would still, like, get yeah. the gifts, and I would go shopping for her just like I would do my mom because I'm representing him. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I don't give a damn if we're not talking or not. If I, if I shop... I'm, I come from, and I'm very, 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 and I was just talking about this other day, I'm very funny when it comes to, I come from very, very humble beginnings. I come from the projects. I come from, uh, when we lived in the projects in Virginia, we moved to Baltimore, we lived in West Baltimore. My mom used to get high. I don't I've been around some real shit. Mm -hmm. um, took care of my sisters when they were little. You know, all of that shit. So I had, my, my mom used to be gone for months at a time, and we were staying, my grandmother was about 50 years in that bitch. Mm -hmm. And I know how it feels to have favoritism. Or you know, or to not be the favorite, mm -hmm. or to you know want something that you can't have. So I have a very bad phobia when it comes to like um, people favoring kids or any type of favoritism mm -hmm. or or anything. Like you know, so if you say it's your daughter's birthday, I'm gonna shop for your daughter as if it was my goddamn daughter mm -hmm. because I know how that feels to you know what I'm saying for people to not treat you as their own. So the question of the day has stemmed from a situation that I experienced from a person that I know. Mm -hmm. She went and bought an individual a, a birthday gift, and she said, and guess what? He didn't even give me the money back. So at at one point I was like, you know what, damn, that shit crazy, because he should always reimburse you, especially if you don't got it. That's a difference. If you say, yo, I ain't got it, but I'm gonna go make sure I get whatever, da, da, da. that can be discussed. But if it's a situation like, yo, just give it, oh, no problem, like, shh, nigga, I ain't even looking for that back, like, cool. But when I started thinking about it, and it didn't hit me until this morning, I said to myself, why the fuck should he have to give you something back? Right. Because, let's flip it. Tiffany was a girl, right? Mm -hmm. If Tiffany say, hey, Joe, I need, you to go, I need you to go uh, pick up Le, uh, Le, Le Ja um, birthday gift, I forgot. I'm working tonight, and I need, you, I need to have this gift wrapped and everything for in the morning. 
he delivers the gift. When is Joe expected to get that money back from Tiffany? Never. You see what I'm saying? You see, you see the disc. Joe asked for it back. Joe better lose that goddamn number. Come on, man. Come on. There's a there's a double standard. There's a yeah. double standard when it comes to money and reimbursement of money. And you now, know, if he knew that she didn't have, now I will say, this, if you know that she does not have it, then you know what I'm saying. That's a difference. If mm -hmm. she say, listen. I got three hundred dollars in my nigga, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You know what I'm saying? But this towards my rent or whatever, I got you. Right. But that's her transparency of being, Correct. you know, what I'm saying of her having to say that. So now I do think it's a double standard on certain thing when it comes with being a woman when it comes to shit like that. Yes, mm -hmm. it is, but just like there's other different standards why men can go have sex with a thousand women and a woman do it, she's a hoe. So you know, there's always double standards. You know how that goes. So exactly. So let's be realistic. I got another <laughs> double standard for you, from a man's perspective. I'm gonna hit to that. As soon as I close out this, I say, you know, people get real petty about reimbursement. People get real petty about money, yeah. right? And the truth is, you know, you have a situation where, you know, somebody does you a favor. Mm -hmm. It's almost, well, whatever. People, people start feeling like, man, I ain't got to, like, if you fuck with me, like you say you fuck with me, why the fuck should I have to get it back? Oh, damn, you asking for that little bit. Yeah, of, that's a problem for you me. You asking for that little bit back, man, here, damn. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it wasn't, it's the, it's it wasn't principle. a little, yeah, it's the principle. It's the principle. I see it on both sides. So. I don't see it on the other side. My thing is, if you fuck with a person, why should you keep count and keep score if you just trying to make each other happy? Yeah. But if you don't, it's just like, if you said it, like you just said, man, I really ain't got it. Or nine times out of 10, if you're dealing with me, I will tell you, hey, I need you to go do this for me. Here goes the money for it. No, nah, I don't need it, nah, but here, this here is the money again. for it, right? Because I don't, I don't be like people, I don't like own nobody, nothing. Yeah. But that comes from a person who's financially Well, maybe financially he was stable. just testing her as well. Maybe he was testing her to say, let me see if I don't give her the money, how hard she gonna go for mine. Mm. Maybe that was a situation. Maybe he want to see, like, damn, is this bitch going to go get a $20 gift or is she really going to go all out for my daughter like she with her own kid? I got you. You get what I'm saying? Closing that <laughs> and opening another door that you said double standards. To that double standard that you mentioned, in order for you to go back, you just have to rewind to the double standard that she kind of, the hoe versus the pop and do. Mm -hmm. Oh, the pop! Oh, he's the popping dude. Okay. He popping. Okay. Okay. Not popping. <laughs> not popping to, uh, you know. You said it how you meant to go ahead. <laughs> Here you are. Um, like, I, let, let, can we give me another man? Mm -hmm. Give me a name. Shay. Shay. That's a that's a that's a dude's name. Oh, a guy name. Guy name. John. John. John and Shay. All right. So John goes out to the club. John's popping. John, let's say he's a basketball star. Mm -hmm. Right. He goes out to the club. How many women can appease John in that club out of 10? I, oh, I don't know how many he wants. Only, only, you only need one to appease but, you. Right. But out of that, he like, man, uh-uh, oh, that ain't my type. How many types can he just say, you know what, boom, this is all I'm looking for for this particular given moment. How many women? Out of ten women, when John goes. Well, that's something. I mean, that's that's keep you can be thrown up in the air because every man sees something different. I know some men that, that I had a man tell me one once before that there's a difference between a woman being beautiful and a woman being sexy, and like you know you can have an ugly woman but she can be sexy as a motherfucker. Mm. So it depends on John. You trying to make you trying to be so. I'm just saying. You telling me how, how I'm gonna tell John where please him not do. I, as a man, I feel like he don't need ten women to please this him. This ain't he only psychological need one. warfare. I'm just he saying. He only need one woman. But out of those one woman, he can find that in pretty much any one of those women that's in that club. Correct? You would think. Depends on what he's looking for. Okay. Now listen. Now he's looking, or what he's looking for. Sex. He's looking for sex. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. What how many women can give him that? All of them. Okay. Let's say Shay. Mm -hmm. Shay popping. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. She she done dropped a couple albums. She's you, she she's got that one. she's that chick gotcha. right. She walk into that same club. Mm -hmm. How many men can give her what she wants? Depends on what she was looking for. <laughs> With how you feel now, your your Sasha Fierce, your alter ego, mm -hmm. right, is Shay. Okay. And speak for Shay. So when you say so, what you mean? I'm you lost me. So Shay is a person who is very successful. If she doesn't have a man, she's looking for sex for the night? No, 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 no. she's looking for a man? She's just looking for a man. 
I mean, well, she's going to, she's gonna, I guess whoever has the best personality that catches her attention at that moment. How many out of 10 men? Either one of them could be it. Bullshit. How? Bullshit. How? Because first off, I'm going to give you like this. When John walks into that club, if he financially stable, he does that. It's only but a very few things. Yeah, that that's not true. Let me say this. Well, this is what men always do that. Come on. Let me tell you Let's why. Let's keep it funky. Let's keep it funky. There are some very, I know a lot of successful women who, who um, don't necessarily, the man have to make more money than her, but no one, no, no, nobody, not even you, not even men, want a person that can't bring nothing to the table. See, with women, with men, yeah, you could have all the money, but the woman still brings something to the table, as you said in your last Value. Interview. She Va brings value. Cooking, mm -hmm. cleaning, value. a backbone, right. love, support, morally, physically, all of those things. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A, a partner. Mm -hmm. Now, as a woman, a man can come to the table. He can either bring those things, right? Mm -hmm. Or he can bring those things plus a bag, right? Mm -hmm. Or... You have the ones who don't bring none of that shit and cheaters. You have the ones who have the money that are cheaters. So it's like you pick a struggle. So for every woman, I think it's different. I don't feel like men always like, well, yeah, well, women always want the men with the money, but the men don't be looking for the women with the money. Let's 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 keep it a buck. And we true. just we just we just talking about <laughs> real <laughs> scenarios. Okay, go right? ahead. <laughs> and I'm just speaking my truth from a man's perspective. Okay. Right. The man that can relate to me. Not all man. I'm just man Bet that you. relate to me. Right. So with that being said, you can be, you can create value mm -hmm. that's not monetarily, but monetarily, monetarily value mm -hmm. pays the bills. And if I were to say, if I were to say, what is the main reasons why people are, get separated? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Children. They get separated for? Like if we, if, if, if. It's, 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 it's money. Children and um, and infidelities. Those are the yeah, top three things. Top three. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, how many relationships could have been saved if infidelity was not even an issue? Probably ninety percent of them. Ninety percent. Yep. Which is my point. So, when that man John goes into that club mm -hmm. and he is just looking for a good time, right? Mm -hmm. John ain't worried about who she is, how much money she got. He just looking for a good time. Hold on. Go ahead. I'm going to let you on. go. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Shay goes into that club. Uh -huh. a, broke, a broke dude mm -hmm. will never have the time of day to shoot his shot to a dog on Shay. Because it's just like, uh-uh, girl, he walking in here with a Heineken. He ain't got no section. Uh-uh, that ain't what we doing. He would never be able to shoot his shot. Personality. Personality but does or no that make, personality. But does that make Shay wrong? No, okay. it's just the reality of it's not a reality. But let me tell you like this: this, this is what I have. Let me ask you a question. Oh, please. Okay. Oh, so yeah, let me ask you a question. Oh, I can't wait. Do you respect? What do you respect more or less? If you had, I'm, I'm not saying you had to respect any of them, but if you had to give one of them more credit than the other, a hoe or a prostitute? They're the same person. They're the same person to you. Yeah. They okay. Are. Why you say that? So. I, okay, I can ask. You, can I? Can I ask? You this? I'm gonna answer your question. Mm -hmm. But what makes, what makes you working at, and work and you working at, a different thing? No, no, no. See, that's that's the, we're talking about two different things. Those no, are jobs. No, no. I say a hoe, or a prostitute. See, a hoe is a as a person, who just f fucks just to fuck. She sleeps around for just because she gets nothing from it. She goes home with a wet ass and nothing to show for it. She goes out for a good time. That that's that's a hoe. Prostitute. I respect the prostitute. Okay, so now that, that, that's what I'm saying. I respect the prostitute because the prostitute gets paid directly. Okay. A hoe gets paid indirectly. See, my, that, that's my point. So when goes back, go back to Shay in the club. Not saying that Shay is trying to be a prostitute or a hoe, but Shay is saying, listen, I'm not about to lay down with a nigga who can't bring no type of value walking around the club with a fucking Hanukkah bottle. Uh, well, whatever you call it, right. a Corona. Corona. <laughs> <laughs> with grenadine no in it. No 19, <laughs> with grenadine. That's like, a thing? Yo, back in the day it was. What? <laughs> when niggas was That's broke, new. That was you thing. just put somebody <laughs> up, girl. Hey, let me get a Corona with some, uh, some grenadine with in some it. grenadine in it. Yeah, that's um, crazy. Yeah, so like, you know, as a as a woman, it's like, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the time or the patience to even waste. Now, 
granted, the dude who pulls up in the Ferrari or whatever car and got the section all that, they can be just not as shit as, as, as the dude, you know what I'm saying? With the Heineken. With the Heineken, and that's absolutely true. Right. So that's why I say when it comes down to me, it's, it's personality. Now, don't get it wrong. I ain't fucking with no broke nigga neither. Hello. That's the only lie. thing that I wanted to hear you say. No, but I'm not. And a lot of women who've seen this, whether they want to believe it or not, and we can say, we can say, I don't even call them groupies no more. I call them vultures. Because <laughs> when, you, when you see them vultures around and they see some roadkill, they go after a type. Right? right? That doesn't make them a bad person. Hear me out. No, I get what you're they're saying. Not, they're not a bad person. You have, you have preferences. Right. And if you really look at it, it's like to your whole and your prostitute thing, it's no different than that person being a groupie or being a person that's just like, I just got my preferences. Mm -hmm. So to that, m most women not dealing with nobody who's not bringing nothing financially to the table but as a man. But this is the thing. When I say a broke nigga, I mean, I'm not just talking about financially either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. He don't have to make as much money as me. But sure, you have he, to, he has to bring, he has to have his own shit. He, ha he literally has to be, if, the, if he ain't got it, he got to have a plan to get it. I cannot stand a person who's content. Like, you cannot be content. I don't want no nigga who's comfortable, because I'm never satisfied. So you can date a person who makes less money than you? Yeah, I make a lot of money, so shit. Damn, That's I mean, a fact. Yeah, so he can, make, he can make a little bit a little bit less, a little 10, 20,000 less. <laughs> That's still a lot of money now. Come on now. Because then, because you, you know what? I'm going to give you a, another man's perspective. Guess who going to be judging you? Who? Waka. You ain't like, that's the truth. <laughs> this me. This me now. Because cause when you bring him to the forefront and say, hey, this my boyfriend. Who your boyfriend is? John. Oh, man, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck is John? <laughs> this motherfucker, as, a, as another male from another male, you're going to look at him like, who the fuck is John? You're going to look him up on Instagram. You're going to look him up on TikTok. You're going to Google him or whatever. And you're going to be like, oh, this nigga corny as fuck. This nigga got, you know, a thousand yeah. followers. Like, he and his page private. He got more posts than, than followers. Dudes look at that and they're gonna say, You dealing with this? When you I mean, had that? But the thing is, is, who equivalates that to like, I'm telling, I don't want no nigga with no lot of followers. I done been there, I done done mm -hmm. that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so me, I'm just in a different space in my life. Like, right. I ain't looking for, would you, that ain't what I'm so, in my, my space. So I say that to say, it's not about followers, it's about that baggage. Now right. let's let's and I'm just I'm just being very candid. Dudes ain't got no Instagram. Listen, they got a bag. Right, <laughs> right. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just because you're going to another entity, that right. does not mean that his baggage it's is any always... different. It may be changed. So when you pick up a Louis Vuitton bag, when you pick up a Gucci bag, when you pick up pick up a black owned business bag, when you pick up a Publix bag, mm -hmm. it's still a bag. Right. Right. So when you say I left somebody who was a cheater. Now you're going into somebody who's not financially stable, right? Oh, no, or is insecure, mm -hmm. or has trust issues, right. or has mommy issues, mm -hmm. or does not take care of their children. Mm -hmm. They have money, but they don't take care of their children. Right. They don't raise their children. Right. Right. Or a person who is just not is not what is it? Not intimate, but um, you know that caring desire to just be right. like, man, he right. don't he don't he don't affectionate. Pop, affectionate right. That word. Right. Right. So it doesn't matter what it is. It could be in, in, uh, infidelity for one person, mm -hmm. and that may be like, uh-uh, I ain't dealing with that. But, then but got, uh, the, the grass ain't always greener <coughs> on the know, other side. That's absolutely true. So that's all I'm warranting you. No, but the thing about it is it's not always about the grass. It's about you, mm -hmm. my grass. Mm -hmm. what I, what I, and that's what I had to realize as, as a woman. What, what serves me right now? Right. My happiness. Yes. Because all, like I said, I've grown up, I, I, I'm known to take care of, I put everybody before I put myself. That's my personality. Right. I put everybody before I put myself because I grew up in a survival state. You know what I'm saying? I grew right. up having to take care of my little sister. I grew up watching over shit. I grew up, I grew up, I put loyalty before everything. I have a tattoo on me. So for right. me, everything comes first. So even, that's why I say even when me and Walker separating the past and his ops tried to holler me. I hit him up, nigga. I ain't I don't, I, don't call my phone, but I'm just letting you know, da 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 da. Because I don't want no nigga smiling in your face and knowing that this, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I ain't, I ain't never gonna play those type of games. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm, I have to, it's my time now. Right. What makes me happy? So it took me a long time to get to that point. Like, damn, are you really happy? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a you question. It's a you <coughs> 
It's a you versus you question. Am I really happy? And a lot of people who are in relationships are not happy. They haven't it, found it, that happy medium to really be cool with saying, you know what, I'm the best version of myself, so my kingdom, personal kingdom, is thriving. Therefore, I can also <coughs> sprinkle my light on somebody else's situation, which is and may be my partner, too. It took for, it take a lot of self researching for yourself for you to realize like damn maybe i do have because a lot of times we have past trauma not just from relationships but also from childhood yes also from relationships yes. prior to that yes you know i always tell people the story how with my um with my first marriage first husband right um it was a lot of uh abuse physically emotionally mm -hmm. things of that sort never ever talked about that publicly right um i think that damn cigar got me now. yeah i got you mm -hmm. don't worry about it i'll put it up boom i remember like um when i first got in a relationship with waka and we would get in arguments or no he would say something to me and i would get i would automatically get in defense mode mm -hmm. and he's like damn if i say like for instance like damn why you baby why you um why you uh, clean the kitchen? What you trying to say? I'm clean, nigga? What you trying to say? I'm clean, <laughs> Like, you know, I was just automatically like on, oh, on, on, on go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. like, damn, nigga, I ain't even coming at you. Like, I'm mm -hmm. just saying. But I was so used to being talked down to. Yeah. That everything that he said was, a, you know, an issue. Mm -hmm. um, one day we got to this real ar this, like, argument, you know, and Walker's he's probably the same height as you, so he, he jumps up and I'm sitting down and we argue with he. He argued, he like get up and I like kind of like flinched and shit. And he like stopped the whole argument, like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why the fuck is you flinching? Like, nigga, I would never put my, like, what? It made him feel like he went from being this green giant to yeah. like, it just like, like he just deflated, like, mm -hmm. yo, like, nigga, don't, like, he like, you make me feel like a monster. We like, don't, don't do ever that. do we that. Do, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, you know, and I didn't even that. realize that that was my, That's and what I'm you so, came from. yeah, and I'm so, def and even after he deflated, I'm still like, Nigga, like, I ain't scared of you. Ah, <laughs> and he's like, yo, this girl is crazy. Right. But for me, I had to real, like, looking back, I'm like, damn, I really was mentally fucked up. Like, mm -hmm. I really, you know, my mouth, and I think back then it was probably what attracted him to me because he used to tell me, like, I ain't never had a girl talk to me because like, my mouth was just crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm still learning to calm my mouth down, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But as I got older and I just started reflecting over everything and – and I'm, I'm saying older like I'm that old, but I feel like I'm way older because I've been through a lot You've at such a stuff. young age. And, and you would be a fool if you haven't took that to, took that life lesson and made it impact you to become a better person. Exactly. So, and it's like it had nothing to do with, that's why I tell people like, oh, Walker, he's a great person and I mm -hmm. de he deserves to be happy and I want him to be extremely happy. I want yeah. the next woman to be like the most everything that he needs you yeah. know what i'm saying because before we get to a space where i don't i would never like i would never want to lose respect for him yeah so when you when you know and you're mature enough to say i gracefully bow out right you get what i'm saying Correct. and that's the space that i'm in and i noticed that i wasn't happy so i have to make me happy and whatever yes. that is is what you know what I'm saying he I has to be he, he deserves to be happy and respected you know right before we get out of here man i do want to talk about what you got going on right now use this platform to be able to talk about your swimwear line also talk about your skincare line as well absolutely yeah 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 so i just dropped my skincare line which is like a um, full regimen of everything that i use daily mm. it's a weekly exfoliator a daily face wash, a face cream, and an eye cream. Mm. And it's really stuff that I use every day, and everyone uses it, all the men in my family, all the women in my men family. Men, too? Yeah, it's, it's, it's for men and women. Okay. Yeah, so everyone uses it in my family. Like, it's the bomb. Does it does it matter with the ethnicity? Does it is it specific to people of color? or? or? It, it doesn't, because my, my father's from Nicaragua, my mom's. Chocolate. Nicaragua. Mm hmm So he got some good, he come from smoking cigars. <laughs> so why you <laughs> I know, right? I'm about to die. <laughs> uh-uh. Man, come on. <laughs> they got some of the best cigars in the world over I there. I know, yep. So, and my mom, she's chocolate. My daughter, she got Trini in her. Mm. My, my little sister, half white and black with freckles. My other sister, it's a whole bunch of us. Like, yeah. So I have everybody. In my, I'm so family oriented. So I have everybody in my family. Are your Are first. your parents still together? 
My father's been locked up in custody for 35 years. What? I'm still trying to get him out. But the California uh, Correctional Facility is, they are known for holding, like, inmates. And literally, black and Hispanic inmates are held at a much longer rate than oh. Asians, whites. They release them way faster. So you've never hugged your dad? Twice. Out of incarceration? No, never. Nope. So that's trauma right there. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. But and as I'm a, his only child. As a partner, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I went to school. I got my sociology, sociology degree, but I would always take psychology classes. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's taking psychology right now. The person who I am now, it's not about a person raging out and be like da da da. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where did this come from? Hey, where you from, bro? Mm -hmm. Your parents are together. Hey, you got any kids? Because there's something that's triggering, and what triggers me may not trigger you. Absolutely. Or, or in a different way, what makes you cry may not make me cry. Right. You know, you may be, you may like bones being cracked. Ah, I cringe at that. You may like blood. Ah, you right. may like snakes, or I may like snakes. You'd be like, uh, uh, that ain't me. But yet, you know, once you get down to the genesis, when you put a microscope to the situation and say, like, how can we expect this? And it's, it's forever knowledge that a person can find out about that person, whether you're intimate, whether you're business, whether you're just leisure. Mm -hmm. You know, people that's around you, you have to know what they're going through because it'd be the people that's around you that's suffering the most without even... And then a lot of times it's also like people judge. I don't have women tell me that I don't know the struggles of a black woman because I never had to be a chocolate black woman. I don't have people tell me that, or I don't have people say, oh, you you can't never judge a book by its cover. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You just never know. Do you what, believe in, I'm sorry for cutting you off, do you believe in pretty privilege? Absolutely, I do. I'm not going to lie and say I won't. So, I but that's probably what they meant. Yeah, I get I, I get that too, but there's there's things to where as though you're, it's, a, it's both sides to it. Yeah. So I'm never, ever going to be, I grew up wanting to be chocolate mm. because my, Everybody around me chocolate. I grew mm -hmm. up in the, with my sister, my mom. My mom's a beautiful black woman. A All mocha latte. A mocha chocolate. Mm. And like in the hood that I grew up, I was the only mixed girl. So mm. I used to get called white girl all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the project like, oh, white girl. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I remember one other mixed girl moving into the projects. I used to beat her up every day. Ah! Like, it's only gonna be one of us, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I was such—I was like nine, ten, and my cousin used to like, "Oh, beat her up." You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it was just childish things. But, but even that, like, when people don't understand, like, man, what triggers a person, and knowing, like, it's some fucked up people that been through some fucked up shit that they still smiling, coming to work, and they're in their, your cubicle next to you, they're in your locker next to you, they're in your, you know, everyday walk of life, and you like, hold on, bro, like, why are you getting mad about so-and-so, so-and-so, but not knowing, like, bro, man, you calling me a fool, bro, that's the most disrespectful thing you can ever say to me, mm -hmm. because my dad used to call me a fool, and he used to beat me too, so I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you, because that reminds me of, right, of, you know of that self-reflection, yeah, exactly. exactly. But then also, like, I, I, I also remember growing up and being my best friend, like, moving to Baltimore, my best friend, like, the, the, the girls who were light with the pretty hair, they wanted me to hang with them, and they didn't like me, but I was hanging with chocolate girl that had no hair, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, my, just still my best friend to this day. Yeah. Um, because I could relate to her because we had we had that story, you know what I'm saying, right. alike. But because of the appearance, everybody always group you in with, oh, right. you never really had a struggle, you never yeah. been through nothing. They, like, see, they see your final project not knowing the process to get to that project. Not even the final pro project, like my mom literally was getting high. My mom would smoke crack just like everybody on the block mama did, but my mom would send someone to go school hers and bring it to her because she didn't want to disrespect her kids. Mm. My house stayed clean. We stayed with food. We were struggling, but she always made sure, my mom was a the type that would be like, I'm gonna make sure this print page, that third, and then I'm gonna go take what's left and go mm -hmm. t do my shit. Where other friends, parents probably, you know. They put their their, their habit Yeah, but, it, but don't get it fucked up. We still had that same struggle, whereas right. though, shit, I woke up like, where the fuck my Timlin's at? Ah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you stole my goddamn Pro Timlin's. Project privilege, too. Right. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, but in my house, my friends always never looked at me as equal because they always thought 
of how you know you the perception. Structure. Yeah, because of, you know because I did I wasn't running around dirty or because I looked the way I looked or because I was light skinned or whatever mm-hmm. the, whatever the case was. Um, nobody you know saying really knew the struggle. I watched my uncle get killed in front of me on my twelfth birthday in broad daylight. You feel what I'm saying? Like right there. So I I know children who could never people that grown people who would never ever experience some shit like that. Mm-hmm. But because of how I look, even now people always like a lot of people always like I don't see how her walker just never until Man. you talk to me. It's like oh right. I get it. A lot of people and I heard this from a a preacher. You don't look like what you've been through. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. So to my point, it's like you, people are always, I said project, but I meant product. You look like your final product to people, and that's the success, but they don't see the process that it took to get to that. Man, Tammy, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. You know me. what I'm saying? This was, a, this was a breath, of, a breath of fresh air, man. Shout out to my girl, Don. <laughs> Auntie Don. She behind the scenes. She holding it down, man. I got her her flats, lemon pepper, extra sprinkles. You know Hurry. what I'm saying? All that. That Atlanta for you. You dig what I'm saying? And as, all, as we always end things, uh, we're going to look at this one. The, Let's look at this one first. Oh, we gotta look at yours. No, that's yours. Oh, that one was mine. Oh, yeah, that one is mine. Hey, Sam, look at you. you look, she I'm already like, tried to look at yours. We gotta look at yours. Huh? <laughs> Wrong, right? So, one finger. Okay. One pinky. One thumb. One love. Period.